going guys? Jake Adams here and uh, it's early morning. I'm kind of excited to do a tour of some of my local fish stores. It's a little bit too early and most of the shops don't open for a little while. Since this is kind of an aquarium day for me and I'm gonna go do some touring, it'd uh, be a good time to clean up my Nano Reef Aquarium. Um, so the tank behind me is, a, is an absolute pleasure of a nano tank. It's about as, as basic as it gets. It's uh, six or seven gallons. Um, it's got a really beautiful uh, Altum Nature Systems uh, glass box. Um, but the tank itself is, is uber, uber simple. It couldn't be any more simple. All it has is a pump, a protein skimmer, and a heater. It's just really balanced. Doesn't have any fish in it, just a one blue coral banded shrimp. But it's really just kind of like a, a polyp tank to catch a lot of different things with a emphasis on Caribbean animals. Instead of just showing you a beautiful, polished up, gorgeous aquarium, I figured I would bring you along for, uh, just kind of show you the maintenance regime for this particular nano aquarium. You guys know me as kind of a you know, reef aquarium gearhead, and I'm always into the latest and greatest, but I really love this tank because it illustrates uh, how simple it can be to set up a reef tank and to keep it over long term. So this aquarium uh, can be maintained as little as five to 10 minutes. Um, if I take like one full hour, I can just super polish everything and make it look super duper clean. So um, we're gonna just do a few things to this tank and scrape the glass, do a water change, probably about 80 to 90%. That's gonna be 80 to 90% of what the tank needs. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and clean the protein skimmer, probably just clean up um, the pump that's on it. So uh, follow me along as I show you uh, just kind of the very basic maintenance for this Nano Reef tank, because it's an absolute pleasure. And uh, even while doing this video, I don't think it's gonna take more than an hour to uh, get it into tip top shape. Um, before I go to the fish store. And then the last thing I wanna say um, is I've actually neglected this tank just a tiny bit over the last two weeks, just to kind of exaggerate um, how dirty it gets um, in between water changes. So um, normally the water level is not that low. Normally it's had a water change. I actually went to do a water change on this tank about two weeks ago, but I looked at the tank and the corals just looked, and everything looked great. And I was like, oh, I'm pretty sure this tank just wants to be left alone. So um, so yeah, let's get started. We're gonna start by uh, cleaning up the glass, take a look inside and see what else to be, needs to be done. So thanks for joining me and let's get started. So as you can see, I've gone ahead and uh, scraped the glass, uh, keep it nice and clean so I can actually see what's going on in there. There's a couple tufts of algae that I'm gonna take out, but um, I'm gonna let the uh, all the detritus and stuff that I've stirred up go ahead and settle down to the bottom of the tank. And in the meantime, I'm gonna pull out the power head and the protein skimmer and give those a thorough servicing and maintenance, maintenance uh, check, make sure everything is running properly. So uh, let's go ahead and get those out of the tank. And uh, right after that, we'll be ready for the water change. So doing the water change is actually one of the easiest parts of this particular uh, aquarium maintenance regime. This is my preferred seven gallon bucket. It's got that extra volume. And then I use a, a skinny hose to uh, suck out the detritus and the funk from the bottom. And I got my salt water handy. It's at the right salinity. It's at the right temperature. Uh, very crucial for a small tank like this. All right, so it's time to change some water and suck out a little detritus while I'm at it.
right, so now that that's over with, I got the tank uh, glass cleaned, protein skimmer cleaned, um, sucked out some of the funk and the extra algae with the water change, and I've gone ahead and filled the tank back up. The pump is running, and um, you might have noticed I'm still like an inch from the top, and I'm gonna give the pump just a couple minutes to circulate the new water inside the aquarium, um, and having that inch of water is gonna allow me to adjust the salinity. So um, before I walk away from this, the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test the salinity in uh, parts per thousand, the actual salinity, um, and that's gonna tell me whether I need to top off the rest with salt water or fresh water. Um, so let's do that. It's a, it's a basic step, but also super duper important for any salt water tank that you might have. I keep the refractometer real close to the tank so I can check it on the dime anytime I want. Okay, so I'm really glad I left some room at the top of uh, the tank because the salinity is right about 36 parts per thousand. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add like one third seawater and then top it off um, the rest of the distance with fresh water. And that should get me right at about 33 to 34 PPT that I wanna be at. So I'm back a couple days after doing the water change and the tank looks crystal clear. This is one of those tanks that's just really easy to take care of because I don't test the water. Um, it's such a small tank with small um, mineral demands that uh, just performing a basic water change really resets everything from the nutrients to the uh, chemistry balance. I know I'm gonna have some questions about this tank and uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and answer some of those preemptively. Um, as far as how often do I do the water changes, um, I really kind of eyeball it depending on how dirty the tank uh, appears to be or if, uh, how often I need to be cleaning the glass, but it generally falls about every six to eight weeks. Um, I'm actually clean the protein skimmer a little bit more often. Um, so about once a month, I think I'll clean the protein skimmer. The uh, pump is um, uh, Akamai KPS uh, by Hydor. That one I'll clean maybe every like two months to 10 weeks. If you clean them really, really well and thoroughly, it takes a lot longer um, for biofouling to start happening and for them to start getting dirty. So. This is not your typical reef tank. There's no real filter. I'm really relying on the protein skimmer to aerate the tank and uh, export some of the nutrients. And the, uh, the Akamai pump is the only form of water motion in the entire tank. The only other piece of equipment is a small preset heater that's preset for 78 degrees. You can get by with this kind of filtration on a tank that has no fish such as this one. So the only higher life form that I have in the tank, the blue legged, blue legged coral bind and shrimp. Um, he kind of hangs out in the back and comes out in the evening or the mornings. Um, so since there's no fish, it's very little feeding. Um, I just kind of let the blue legged coral banded shrimp uh, collect some little pods here and there and some errant uh, bristle worms that he might find. Um, but sometimes, periodically, I will do some target feeding of the animals inside. So uh, what is inside? Um, primarily, it's kind of Caribbean focused. So there's some uh, nice large patches of Palithoa grandis, uh, the big sun polyps, uh, some Recordia, got really be big, beautiful blue Recordia Florida, and um, some flower anemones. This is where I've been putting my flower anemone collection uh, that I've picked up at the shows throughout the year. Uh, lighting up the tank is a Illumagic Blaze X uh, Nano LED. Um, really love this light. It's got great color output at maximum intensity. And you might have noticed um, from some of the other clips that uh, there's actually a spotlight off to the side. And um, this is actually kind of like a viewing light. The Blaze X uh, is more than enough to light up all the, the animals inside. Um, but I turn on the accessory uh, spotlight. Uh, it's by Vox Japan. And it's on one of the Ladio line LED spotlights. I turn that on uh, kind of for viewing, just to get a little extra pop. It's got solid blue, but it's like four or five shades of blue, including UV. Um, so it really helps to just, you know, make all the colors pop and I really want to enjoy the tank. So um, this tank's been a real pleasure. And um, uh, for this video, I really just wanted to bring you along with the experience of just some basic uh, nano reef aquarium maintenance. Um, one of the few drawbacks for not having a real filter on there besides a water pump and a protein skimmer is it will develop um, a little bit of surface film on the top, which I might scoop out with uh, just kind of a small container. Uh, but since I don't add that much food, that film doesn't build up quite too much. So um, yeah, I'm gonna feature this tank a little bit more in the future, less of the maintenance routine and a little bit more on the equipment and on the animals. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. 
Um, if I didn't answer some of your questions about this tank, go ahead and drop them down in the comments below. Make sure to uh, smash that thumbs up button and subscribe. Uh, we're ramping up the video production here towards the end of the summer. So uh, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys on the next one.